If you want to achieve this satisfying animation in React and sync a video playback with the amount of scrolling a user has done, just follow these steps. Also, you can find all of the repos and assets in the description down below. Just open your favorite ID and just paste this command from the gist that I provided in the description to create a React project in the current directory. Then hit enter. Then install them and now run the project for now. Perfect. Now open the file explorer in the src folder, remove assets, app.css, index.css, go to main.tsx, remove the index.css from here, then go to the app.tsx, remove all the things here and return the simple fragment just for now, then remove all of the unnecessary imports and also app.css here. Perfect. This is our video footage that we want to use in the tutorial. You can find the link in the description below or you can use your desired video footage but we cannot just throw this footage into our project and expect it to work we need to convert this video into a sequence of images we need to get each frame of this video then convert each frame to an image and because of that we need a tool called ffmpeg if you haven't installed it yet on your system just follow these few steps the ffmpeg is an amazing tool for manipulating the video footages or even images just head over to their download page ffmpeg.org slash download.html then scroll down here hover over the windows depending on your operating system click on the first option here then scroll down a little bit and download this one here exactly after that when the zip file is downloaded here just extract it here change the folder name to only ffm peg here ffm peg like this then copy this folder in your desired location i choose the root of the drive c here like this then open it again go to the bin folder then copy the address of your bin folder after that just enter in your taskbar system variables open it click on environment variables on the user variables for your user just go down double click on path here then click on new and paste the location that you just copied here because i have done it earlier i don't need to i just delete it perfect click on ok on every dialogues then open a terminal here and type just ffmpeg here and now perfect the ffmpeg is recognized by our system and we installed it successfully now just go to the folder of your footage here open in terminal clear everything for you to see better let me just make it a little bit wider and paste this command that you can find in the description below in a github gist we are using ffmpeg we are putting the video.mp4 which is our exactly video here we are scaling it down to the maximum itself 1000 you can also play with these options here the minus one means that keep the aspect ratio we want to convert all of the images to webp because it's the most suitable format for for the web we can put one to six for compression level we just don't need to make it so compressed with the quality of 80 and we are saving them with this format number.webp and now just hit enter perfect now as you can see here we converted our video footage into a sequence of images now just copy all of them in your application in your public folder create another folder for example called images hit enter then paste the images in this folder just open the images folder like this then paste the images here as you can see here there are images from 1 up to 86 86 images in total perfect but before we continue any further just don't forget to like and subscribe my channel and leave a comment down below if you have any question regarding the video now in our application in the app.tsx file we need to somehow sync the amount of user that has scrolled with the exact image that we want to show to the user for that amount of time but we cannot use something like this we cannot put just image and then change this src for example from image onewebp for example to two.webp it won't work it's not performant at all and for that we need to use an html canvas like this but the canvas is not self-closing just close it like this and we need to somehow programmatically change the render of this canvas manually how to first of all we need to create a reference for our canvas use 
ref from React, paste null for now like this. And for the type of it, you simply pass the HTML canvas element for better type safety in TypeScript. But if you are using JavaScript, it's not necessary to pass it generic here. Then we simply pass our reference to our canvas here. Perfect. After that, we need to create a container for our canvas here like this. Perfect. And we need to increase the height of the container, for example, to something like 5,000 pixels because we want the user to have enough space to scroll and see the animation perfectly. And now if you open our application in the browser here, you see that we have enough space for the user to scroll, but nothing is working now. And the next step is to get the value, the amount of value that user has scrolled of the page and map it to the index of the image that we want to show to the user. To do that, just open another terminal, then install this amazing library called Framer Motion. It has a great hook called user scroll that we can use it in our application. Perfect. Close the terminal. After that, for you to see better the canvas here, I just pass the style a border, for example, one pixel solid and red for it and I then specify the width of the canvas here to 1000 and also the height to also 1000 here like this and now if you open our browser here you see that this is our canvas exactly here and the problem is that we want the canvas be here so the user can scroll down and the animation starts to play to overcome this just place another self-closing diff here, pass the style of, for example, the height of 2000, it just for to create a small gap between the top of the screen and our canvas. And now the user can scroll down. And as we can see here, can see the canvas sequence perfectly. After that, we need to somehow get something from the use a scroll hook from the framer motion that we just installed. We simply get the scroll void progress. It's exactly the th same thing and tells us that how much the user has scrolled from the screen or a specific container. For the options here, I need to pass the target here as my canvas ref here. Another amazing utility that Frame Motion provides is that use motion value event here. We simply pass the use scroll void progress here. We provide the event type here, which is of type change. And on the last argument, we pass a callback here. We get the latest current value of a scroll by progress. Then, for example, I log it to the console for you to see better. I simply log this latest here. And now if you open your browser here, we see that if you scroll down, a value is logging on the console here, but it's not perfectly the thing that we want here because at this state of a scroll i want to this value to be zero but as you can see here it starts of this number which is not the thing that i want and i want it to end at the one but it ends at zero which is not the behavior that i want to overcome this i just need to provide another field here called offset then open an array here let me just close the browser here for the value of this array here Simply pass the center and comma another string start start here like this. So what does it mean? If you want to learn it thoroughly, just head over to the frame and motion documentation and read it for yourself. But I just explained for you a little bit, but it might be hard to understand it because it's a little bit tricky. Now, if you open your browser here and scroll down, you see that the start of the value is from zero. And when we go down, you see that it's increasing and it will be ended at the number one here. We have told the framer motion that we want when the center, which means the center of our target, our canvas here, reaches the end of our container, which is the window itself. Let me just open the console again. When the center of the canvas reaches the end of our window here, we see that it starts to counting, which is exactly the behavior that we want. And when we want to it to end is that when the start of the canvas hits the start of our window. So if I scroll down a little bit more here, 
you see that when the start of the canvas hits the start of the window, the exactly which is the number one. So you can change these values according to your need. For example, you can put a start here or end here. But in this scenario, I think the center might be a better option here. Now we need to load all of our images into a variable to use them. Create a cons called images here. We are using use memo from React for better performance and optimization. Then provide a callback here and create a simple array of dependencies here for now. I create another cons called loaded images, which is of type HTML image element, element like this, an array of them with the empty value of empty array. We create a four loop here like this. Let's i be equal to one until the i is less than or equal to 86. I want to i plus plus here like this. Where does this 1 and 86 came from? If you open our images folder, we see that our sequence starts at the 1 index and ends at the 86 here. 1 and 86 and it might be different from your use case scenario. In the for loop, I simply create another const called image img be equal to new image. And for that image.src, the source of it, I simply pass the pass to that image, which is backslash images in with React, a slash goes to the public folder and the images go to the folder that we desire here. Let me just close the explorer, then put another backslash and we need to somehow provide the number of the image that we want. We simply pass the index which we get from the for loop, then we pass the dot webp like this. And we simply need to pass this image to the loaded images like this, loaded images dot push img. And at the end of the for loop, we simply return the loaded images. And after that, we simply use this images array in our application to render the desired image on the canvas. If you recall earlier, we saw that the value that each time the user scrolls changes, it's a float number. And we need to somehow map that 0 to 1 number into 1 and 86, which is the total length of our image sequence. But somehow it's pretty simple also with the help of the Framer Motion library. Just above the use motion value event here, just use this code here. We simply create another const called const current index, which is exactly the image that we want to show to use there at that specific amount of a scroll is equal to use transform we imported from framer motion for first argument we provided with a scroll by progress we create an array here first argument we pass zero and for the second one we pass one it says that we want to map the values that the scroll by progress returns from zero to one to what to one to 86 which is our image sequence so when the scroll by progress is zero it will return for example if it is point half it will return 40 or something and if it is one this current index will be 86 which is perfect and instead of passing the scroll by progress here we simply pass the current index in here which is a motion value and each time that the current index changes we want to render something on our canvas here so i put the render function here which we haven't defined it yet with the index of the image that we want so i pass the latest value here which is a number between 1 and 86 six but it might have a small point so we need to convert it to only integers to do that just pass the number from javascript here put the latest here and then round it use to fix the utility from javascript to make for example the zero dot for example something into zero or to convert the 1.8 something into two which is exactly that we want. And after that, we need to define this render function exactly above the use motion value event here. I simply create another const called render here, which is a function. So I'm going to use the use callback from React for better optimization. You can decide not to do it and just simply pass the function inside the use callback that I'm going to use. Just pass a callback here with an empty array of dependencies. Perfect. This render function will get an index of type number. And if the images current index exists, we simply want to change something on our canvas. So we are going to use ref.current 
dot get context pass 2d here dot draw image which image we want to draw on it is the current image that we want here index minus one perfect and also we need to pass the images in here and for the x and y arguments of this zero image function we simply pass the zero and zero then i just remove the border from our canvas i change the background to black background color to black like this then i'm gonna center everything in the middle of the screen and now if you open your browser here we see that everything is working as expected we converted our video into a sequence of images so this is the end of the tutorial if you find this video useful liking and subscribing it would really help me and if you have any other question regarding the video just leave a comment down below